All right, and here we are. It looks like we've got a really fantastic group today, both in the audience and um, certainly with our panelists. First of all, happy International Women's Day to all of you. Uh, this is such an incredible day and an exciting day. It's gained so much momentum, both in our industry and everywhere, really, as an opportunity to really celebrate uh, the women in our lives and the people that have influenced and mentored us along so many different career paths. So we've got a fantastic panel. The purpose of today's webinar is to discuss empowering women travelers and also to specifically focus on traveler safety as it relates to women. And, and really focusing in specifically as well on whether or not this is a women only or for those that identify as women topic or something that impacts all travelers. So I'm really looking forward to having a bit of a deep dive into this session with the fantastic and distinguished uh, members of the panel that we've gathered here today. So my name is Charlene Lees. I'm the president of Flight Center Travel Group uh, in the Americas. Flight Center is, of course, the parent company of Corporate Traveler. I'm based in Boston. I've been with the business for about 26 years, and it's a real pleasure, again, to be here with you today and to have our panelists. I'm going to briefly introduce the panelists and then have each of them give a bit more of their background and what they bring to the discussion today. So we have Carolyn Pearson, who is the founder and CEO of Maiden Voyage, Valerie Gavin, who is the Senior Vice President of Global Sales for North and Central America with Accor Hotels, Ashley Corey, our very own VP of Sales here at Corporate Traveler, and one of our uh, wonderful customers, <laughs> Stacey Flippin, who is the Executive Assistant to the President and CEO of Textile Fashion Group. So if we can, we'd like to go through all of the panelists and have you give a bit of your background, starting with Carolyn. Thank you very much. Um, absolutely, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. I'm so happy that we're, we're celebrating International Women's Day together. It's been a good day so far and I've seen lots of wonderful collaboration. And I'm, I'm really just so pleased that people are coming together to participate in this discussion. I guess what I hope to bring to the table tonight is my 15 years experience as chief exec and founder of Maiden Voyage. And as an organization, we were built predominantly to connect women business travelers as we were out there on the road, um, just to create that social community whereby we could have dinner together or share top tips. Over the years, our work has really evolved. And today we're providing inclusive travel security training programs for organizations worldwide, large and small, and nothing gives me more pleasure than really empowering all business travelers, and particularly close to my heart is women business travelers. Fantastic. And I think we're going to talk a lot more about that through the entire session. But towards the end, Carolyn, I think you'll speak specifically about what Maiden Voyage has to offer and some opportunities that all of the attendees here today can take advantage of to really put okay. some of these tips into action. So that's great. Wonderful. Valerie. Well, good afternoon, Valerie Gavin, and I am also really thrilled to be here. I am a hotelier through and through. I've spent my entire career, and actually even before that, with my family in the hotel business my entire life. The past almost 20 years of that have been with Accor, based here in North America. And one of the things that I'm the most proud of with Accor is our passion at supporting women specifically. So today is a fabulous day, and I'm happy to be part of this. Wonderful. Thanks, Valerie. And I know that Accor is a very uh, preferred supplier to Flight Center Travel Group and to Corporate Traveler. We do so much with your company. So it's great to have you today. You mentioned something that's really interesting to me, and that is the family connection. So can you elaborate a little bit on that? You've, you've piqued my interest. Oh, sure. Basically, in my family, you're, uh, everyone is in the hotel business. Even my grandfather started out as an executive chef. And then by the time I was around, he was a hotel general manager. My mother was a director of housekeeping. My father was a director of engineering on property. My sister was in the front office. And so it's really a, a true family affair. So that's amazing. Yes, I think travel is in our blood. So many of us, right? And it's just uh, through and through. So for you, it's a family thing. That's great. Wonderful. Ashley, could you introduce yourself, please? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Ashley Corey and also really thrilled to be here among these esteemed panelists. I am the VP of sales at Corporate Traveler and um, like the rest of us, I've been an avid traveler my entire life. 
um, a, an avid business traveler for about the last 10 years. And um, just traveler safety is something that I'm very passionate about, bringing awareness to this topic. It's something that I think should be discussed more. Um, so I'm really appreciative that Corporate Traveler is, is hosting this panel today and excited to, to dive deeper into this discussion. Fantastic. Thanks, Ashley. And last but certainly not least, Stacey. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled to be here amongst this incredible panel. Um, passion is something that I'm also very, very passionate. I'm travel. I'm passionate about. My father was actually a traveling salesman, so from a very young age, <laughs> he was on the road for five days a week, and I continued that tradition by supporting travel as I um, went into my professional role and managing corporate travel for over ten years now. I'm thrilled and delighted to be here because I support diversity, inclusion, and women always. So delighted to be here. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. Okay, wonderful. What a pleasure. Well, let's dig right into it. I have a little bit of housekeeping that I just wanted to go over so everybody understands the flow of the session. We are going to spend about 30 or 40 minutes discussing the topic and getting some real insights as it relates to each of the travel personas that we've gathered here today. So whether it's a customer, a supplier, a traveler, or an industry specialist on the topic. So we do want to cover um, some of the results of the survey and ask some questions of the panel, but we also want to get questions from the audience. So please feel free to ask questions throughout this session uh, within the Zoom functionality, and we'll try to get to all of them live. If we're not able to answer them, then we'll make sure that in a follow-up um, document that we provide additional information. But please also feel free to reach out to any of us on LinkedIn, and we'd love to engage further on the subject because it certainly is an ongoing topic. So that's the plan for the, for the um, next hour or so. So as mentioned, we did a traveler safety survey specifically related to people who identify as women. And there were some amazing statistics that came out of that survey. And those are really gonna form the basis for the discussion. So 71% of female business travelers who travel on four or more trips feel they face greater risk than their male counterparts. So that's really interesting. And that's something that we've seen with the GBTA uh, and uh, AIG travel as well. 79, this is from Maiden Voyage, 79% of female business travelers felt they were underprepared to deal with incidents they had encountered while away. So those are two really important statistics which highlight the fact that we really need to have this conversation and that this conversation seems to be something that is specific to women and those that I identify as women. So that's really where I wanna focus in on today as we open up the session. So I guess, Carolyn, I'm gonna to toss it to you first because this is something, you know, I've been in the industry a long time. I mentioned 26 years. I'm actually the mother of four children, three girls and a boy. And the question that I'm often wondering is why is this a women topic? Why is this not just a topic that all travelers face? and something that we want to be concerned with for all of the travelers that we support? What makes it inherently a women's topic? So I'm, I'm going to dispel the myth that it is a women's topic. I think all business travelers have got their risks and their challenges and, and their concerns. And of course, we're not just women. If we look at the intersectionality, it could be something to do with our ethnicity, our medical background, our religion. Um, and we, of course, we work with lots and lots of different travel uh, traveler groups, but there are some specific risks which do face women. Um, so women who were born female, for example, will, you know, potentially um, be pregnant or be breastfeeding or going through the menopause or need access to sanitary products or birth control. And we've got the sort of cultural overlay of that, you know, what is allowed, what's not allowed in different countries. We've got the medical risks around maybe the Zika virus. We know that women um, perceived or real um, have got those concerns around sexual harassment. And we know that, you know, there is other types of harassment, such as racial, ha racial harassment or, you know, LGBT groups are also suffering from harassment. So it's not just that it is just a female issue, but there are some issues which are specifically female, if that makes sense. It makes complete sense. Actually, that sheds a lot of light upon that upon that question. So I guess I'm also wondering, and this had come about in the survey questions that we had asked, why is traveler safety feeling like more of an issue of late? And I don't know if it's just post pandemic or during the pandemic, 
But from what we're hearing, um, a staggering 97% of respondents felt more aware of personal safety risks in recent years than they had previously. And what would you say, Carolyn, is there just, just sticking with you for a moment because you are the, sure. the expert? Yeah. Um, well, actually, during um, this, this period of the last two years, I think everybody's stress levels have gone up um, somewhat. People have been sheltering in place or they've been locked down and therefore they've they've got out of the vibe of traveling. And so it is almost like going again. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, during that time, we've seen some really horrific things that, you know, a lot of people are suffering from PTSD and, you know, stress is cumulative. And so whatever that, that underlying stress was, whether it was COVID or you know, the death of George Floyd or the murder of Sarah Everard here in the UK, the war in the Ukraine is, is, is increasing everybody's stress levels. And I think also we've, we've become really mindful of our well-being. And prior to the, the pandemic, I think, you know, a lot of people were very keen or easy to accept that they get up at 4 a.m. for a flight and, you know, fly at six or seven, they work all day, then they do, a you know, a, a flight back and then they're back in the office the next day. And I just don't know if we've got that mental or that physical um, ability anymore. And therefore, people are making choices about whether or not they want to do that. And in that, there is concerns about health, there's concerns about safety, um, all valid reasons. But I think it's just created a perfect storm where people are saying, no, you know, this is not for me anymore. I couldn't agree more. I think that so many of us always had a bag packed and we were ready to go. And we were just so in the flow and comfortable with how we transitioned through airports and hotels and you know, with ground transportation providers and so forth. And we're just out of practice because yeah. it's been such a um, unusual time in all of our lives that we've been home. So, and the other thing that you mentioned that's really important, and I think it's a positive, is the emphasis on mental health. You know, that I feel as though because of what's happened over the past couple of years and is ongoing, certainly with other crises that we're seeing, people are really aware of mental health and they're taking time to take care of themselves because it's so important. And so with that becomes, you know, more awareness and more focus. So, yeah. And actually, um, what we're seeing in our conversations with organizations is that you know, people um, are maybe suffering from long COVID or they're sheltering loved ones or, you know, things like that. And so th there is that level of um, vitality that maybe they didn't have before. And therefore, um, it makes it easier in some respects to have that conversation about, I can't do those long days right now. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And people are more understanding of it. Stacey, I might actually expand upon that question with you because I know you support so many key travelers within your organization, real road warriors. What are you seeing? I think what I'm recognizing is that there is a, like a new sense of boundaries. Like, but, but, you know, this, if we started with six feet and I believe two meters, right? And like, we have to gently roll back those boundaries in a way that make us feel safe. And I think, you know, the airlines did a great job by like during the separation of the seats and now we're sitting closer together. And there is that kind of like relearning how to connect and to be close with people again. Mm -hmm. I think there is a heightened sense of like awareness as well, because social media shows us things, you know, we'll see outbursts on planes or we'll see outbursts in the streets. And those are things that kind of make us, I think, a little bit more hyper vigilant than we were before. The same way that we changed after 9-11, you're more, you're more observant in the airport than you might have been before when you're getting dropped off at the gate. So I think we're just, once again, we're just learning to reconnect and be in the same spaces again. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. We also found from our survey that the um, concern over risk and, and safety really varied depending on whether we were talking about air travel, hotels, or ground transportation. And it seems as though people's safety level, the feeling of security, diminished when we were talking about ground transport, whether it be rental car, rail, uh, shared, you know, shared economy and so forth. So what is, what does everybody think about that? I mean, Valerie, maybe I'll refer to you coming from the hotel industry. Are you um, addressing that di in a different way than you had before? Yeah, I think that Stacy hit it, well, both Stacy and Carolyn hit it. You know, I think you're seeing a lot more happening over these past couple of years. So people are a lot more aware of well, a lot more is happening, first of all, and we're hearing about it on the news every day, whether it's 
people walking down the street and these random acts of violence or, or civil unrest, people are just more concerned, right? And so you're going in, you feel like you're going into this unknown. And on top of that, you also haven't been doing it in a while for most, for most people. So you're a little rusty at the whole process. You get tired easier. You're, you're, um, I, I, I see this in a lot of people too. It's just, we have a shorter fuse, right? We're, we don't realize how stressed we are. So it's quicker, we're, we get anxious a lot quicker than maybe we used to because mm. we're assuming maybe maybe things are more likely to go wrong. So certainly I think on the hotel side, I mean, taking care of people is, it's in our DNA, it's what we do. So mm. whether that's our own employees, our guests, our communities that we're in, it's a huge priority for us. And so a lot of that is just training and, and re-educating our teams on how to, to look for subtle signs of stress and how to help put people at ease and how to be a part of that process and make them feel welcome when they're coming into our hotels. Yeah. And so just expanding on that a little bit, you know, obviously taking care of your people is just mm -hmm. as important, right, as, as a leading hotelier. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other responsibilities that you feel belong to the supplier? you know, wh whatever suppliers it may be in taking care of travelers during this time and safety? I think it's huge. And one thing that Accor has, Accor has actually always had a really long, since the early 2000s, a really long relationship with the UN Women Organization in particular, and mm -hmm. participating in, for example, back in 2015, we were one of 10 corporations that participated in the He for She impact initiative and working on internal and external ways to support not only women but, but all gender diversity and getting support from everyone for increasing the, the amount of diversity that we have at our executive leaderships all the way down through our general managers in our hotels and then now most recently UN Women just in November came out with a statistic that was shocking to me that women Right now, because things have increased over the past couple of years through the pandemic, one in three women has been a victim of some sort of violence, whether it's domestic or sexual violence. One in three women, it's staggering. So Accor was actually selected to be part of their new gender, excuse me, gen, generation equity program. And so we're proudly joining in this and looking at efforts that we can do both internally with our, like I said, with our colleagues, also with our guests and even in our local communities. And a lot of it does stem around, it starts with education and, and then also awareness. And awareness, I mean, you really highlighted something that's key. One in three women have been impacted. So that certainly Shocking. emphasizes, you know, why this is a women's issue yeah. that, you know, separate to all travelers, which certainly we want to focus on as well. But and there is a unique concerns but, for women. I think we, we're in a unique position to do something about it because we make it a priority to, to do something in every place where a core has a presence. And we're present in 110 countries around the world. So we can really make a difference when we work together. Yeah, fantastic. Ashley, if I could just go to you, I'd love to hear your feedback from a traveler perspective, because I know you travel a lot on behalf of our company and our customers, but also as to what we're doing to help make it easier for our women travelers, our customers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've been traveling on behalf of Corporate Traveler for the last six years. And um, one thing that I really value is just the way that I um, am prepared before a trip takes place. So um, when I'm booking with our um, internal travel agents, what I set up is so that my itineraries, not only are they sent to myself, but they're sent to um, a family member automatically as well. So I can set that up in my profile. We also have a great app that allows me to understand where there may be um, disruptions globally. Um, so I think the, the biggest thing is to, you know, now that we're, we're bringing awareness to this topic, 
um, bring a, bringing awareness of how to prepare so that when you're traveling, you are confident in, in yourself and, and able to, you know, have a good experience while you're on the road. And I personally just value what Corporate Traveler has been able to give me and we provide to our customers as well is those resources to be able to prepare. And, and they're, they're, they're small, but they make a big difference so that I feel safe when I'm out on the road on behalf of the company. Yeah, I would say confidence is everything, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, confidence, understanding what, you know, you could be facing and trying to mitigate any surprises as much as possible is so helpful for the business traveler because there's enough disruption that happened on a regular day before, before the craziness of the pandemic and some of the things that we're seeing in today's traveling landscape. So on that topic of confidence, you know, what Stacy would give your traveler is more confidence when they're traveling, you know, or what, what does and what can you envision in the future that we could do better? Well, thank you for the question, because I've actually been asking all of my travelers in the past, the past weeks, especially in preparation for today of what our new travel needs are as we reopen our office and we really start hitting the road hard. And I think the one thing that I have found is that flexibility. I think 10 years ago, we would have travel policies and they would be set in stone and that's the policy and it is what it is. Now I, it, it is flexible, it is malleable, and it, it is ever-changing because we have to be responsive and respectful of what people's needs are. I had a conversation with some EAs last week and who let me know that they were, they were hesitant to take ride share. They actually send their location to their husbands or their partners to make sure that someone is tracking them. And, I, and then I thought to myself, okay, then we need, to, we need to expand our hired car service to make sure that someone, you know, that we have more licensed and bonded options. And mm -hmm. I have to say, and Corporate Traveler has been an incredible partner because we do change and we evolve like often, and you've been a great partner in doing that. Very good. Okay, Valerie, on the topic of traveler confidence, are you hearing anything else in, on your side of the industry about what we can do to increase that? Yeah, I think, um, as Astra mentioned, I think these apps are incredibly good. We have a we're a travel, we host a lot of travels, but we also have a lot of people in our company that are traveling like myself. And I think these security apps are really important because you get the alerts, you have to register. And one thing that I've seen as we're just starting to travel these past couple months is people aren't so used to being, to using these resources, right? So sometimes they even need a reminder internally. Mm -hmm. So I know that I see anybody on my team that's traveling, if they didn't complete the, the registration of their trip in advance, they'll get a, re, a reminder. And then, but when you look at everything that you're getting, it's also reminding you, it's giving you great tips of keeping all these emergency numbers handy, relevant numbers they'll provide you depending on where you're traveling. What are the particular risks that you should be aware of or concerned of? There's a 24 hour hotline that you can call 24 seven with experts that can advise you through any situation you encounter yourself in. So we also have to do education to help them see why this is so helpful and so important to have with them. And then on the, on the education of our travelers and our guests coming in, you know, I think the industry, the hotel industry has done an amazing job of advancing some technology with women in mind, but that really applies to everyone in terms of safety and security. So that even, is minimizing all of your time being alone if you're traveling alone and you have any concerns. So you can register for your room in advance. There is security measures to make sure that you can only go to the key, to the floor that you're authorized to enter for your guest room. There's all these small security touches that you might not even think about that have been put into place over the years that really do protect all of us as we're traveling. Yeah. And what about the, the changing landscape of business travel? You know, we know that it's going to be different, that the reason, the purpose for a lot of these trips is different now than it used to be. And we're seeing a lot more meetings and events, especially internally, because our people haven't been together. And so companies are really focusing on getting, you know, the internal collaboration back. So is there anything specific related to traveler safety for women with meetings and events that Accor is, has changed or is looking at? We've, we've really looked at everything related to, to safety. I mean, we have a, a program called All Safe and Well, and then we have a specific program called All Meet Well that's geared towards the uniqueness of, of a meeting or an event. And it takes, it walks through every phase of the, of the traveler's journey, whether it's how they're greeted at the front desk through throughout the entire process from beginning to end. Um, 
it's pretty large to get into it. But like I said, it does have the female traveler in mind, but it, it applies to everyone. It's not gender exclusive. We do have some other programs that are um, maybe not safety and security related, but we do also think about female travelers and the unique needs that they have just from amenities in the guest rooms and things of this nature. We have certain brands that have more of a female persona, so to, so to speak, even in just the branding of, of, of how we market the hotel. And it it's, attracts more female travelers just by, you know, I would say if in this region, I would point to the Sofa Talon, just the, the French spirit of, of, of the brand. And we have a unique thing with the gallery collection where we actually did a whole study with an external partner and we created a whole program called Inspired by Her. And it really thinks through everything that's in the guest room that a female business traveler would need. Oh, well, yeah, that's absolutely very helpful and something I didn't know about. So that's great. Mm -hmm. I see we've got some questions that are mounting, Ashley, and I know you're working on that for us. But before we get to the questions, can I just ask one more for Carolyn? Um, and that's really about how we approach this topic for either companies or travel managers that don't see this as an issue that don't see you know, safety for women travelers as something that needs to be addressed because we could all probably use some talking points where that's concerned. Yeah, sure. So I think I'll go back to my previous point around the gen generic aspect of duty of care and then I'll, I'll home in on, on, on specific groups. But um, first of all, it's a legal obligation. Um, we've got various legislation here in the UK and in the US. So duty of care legislation, we've got the Manslaughter at Work Act, We've got the new ISO 31030 um, standard, which is on travel risk management. And in fact, that's that. Sorry, not standard. It's a guideline um, in the guideline. It talks about providing resources for specific minority groups, such as women and LGBT travelers. And therefore, it's not only a legal obligation, it's also a moral obligation. You know, I think it, you've got to have a people first strategy, particularly these days after the great resignation, we need to be doing everything that we possibly can to to retain our staff and, and make them want to be, um, you know, to, to stay with us. Um, and it doesn't have to be that difficult, you know, whether it's providing training or advice or having things on the corporate intranet. And again, um, you know, lots of sensitivities around how you get that right information to the right person, because we don't want to force people to disclose maybe personal circumstances that they're not ready to disclose, but actually making um, solutions available to all travelers so that they can consume them anonymously. Um, but I think the crux of this is that we all know what it's like to travel in our context. I know what it's like to be a woman nervous walking down the street at night. But does my manager or do my colleagues know about, you know, some of the concerns that I might have, whether it's related to gender or other aspects? And I think that's where organisations can make a step change, that it's not just the travellers, it's the travel managers, it's the line managers and the colleagues who are travelling with us. Yeah, absolutely. Really helpful information for people that are joining this webinar that are responsible for the travel program at a company and what our obligation is. One other thing that I've seen actually over the years for companies that have frequent destinations they go to, you know, whether offices in other cities or they're visiting a customer on a regular basis, and um, they've developed specific destination guides that are helpful for women and men, you know, what to know when you're traveling, whether it's another culture because a lot of times there are cultural aspects that you just wouldn't be aware of if you're not traveling, but that are really key to, to being able to navigate a different trip. So I've seen some really great best practices over the years, which actually I think we've tried to share as much as we can, but that's a great resource that Corporate Traveler can help with as well. Totally. I think that nobody better equipped to advise you than colleagues from your own organization because you've got, you know, similar outlooks, similar, you've all got the same facilities available to you. Um, and there is a lot of danger in stereotypes, you know, that all French people do this or all British people do that. You know, at the end of the day, we've got such mixed societies, such melting pots wherever we are. Um, and I think we need to get beyond the stereotypes and, and work out what a place is really like because. Sometimes when we look at, you know, women traveler safety or LGBT traveler safety, we hear a lot of horror stories 
And mm. we don't always hear the good news about actually how some places that may be perceived as being scary or dangerous are actually really uh, welcoming and, and, and great, you know, real cultural treat to visit. I and could today's not. about empowerment, right? Not scaring people to death. <laughs> Absolutely. And as part of our purpose as a company, you know, we're really here to open up the world for those that want to see. That's what we've always said. And it is true for our corporate business as well as our leisure business. But what you've just spoken to really highlights that, you know, it's de demystifying some of these destinations and places that are because everything is you travel changes people and it's a it's a beautiful experience in most aspects. So wonderful. OK, so Ashley, um, I believe you're going to be the question guru. Yes, we've answered a few of them already, but there's a couple here just in regards to preparation. So um, the first is, would you find it valuable if your company offered a complimentary self-defense class or certification um, around self-defense specifically for women? Um, I don't know, Carolyn, if you have any um, insight and, and thoughts on, on that topic. Yeah, sure. So um, as part of our training, um, sometimes we talk about sort of predator psychology and how you may be hoodwinked into situations, you know, before you've even realized what's happened to you. And these things can escalate um, in rare cases to uh, to a physical assault. Or I know lots of people have got concerns about ride sharing, for example, what happens if you get yourself in a car and he's taking you the wrong way or you don't speak the language or, you know, I've, I've had some of these situations situations myself but um what we do know is that anybody who has undergone any self-defense training um will walk with a slightly greater air of confidence than somebody who hasn't and we know that perpetrators choose their victims by ease and so if they see two people walking down the street and one person is looking very nervous and, and timid they're more likely to become a victim. So that's the first thing. So I would highly recommend that, um, that people do that either through their company or um, off their own back. The second, I guess, myth that I want to dispel is that self-defense training is not about beating a perpetrator to a pulp. Um, what we try to do is actually teach um, some breakaway techniques and that is basically some simple techniques, even including a, a voice rather than parts of your body to shock a perpetrator and to get yourself away or to get them off you um, and get away. It's not about, you know, staying the course and doing 20 rounds and, and you know, and, and, uh, and having a fight. Um, but actually knowing a few techniques or how to get out of, you know, certain holds is useful. I mean, there are so many different permutations you know do they have a weapon are there two of them where have they grabbed you from what if they grab you from a position where you've not practiced that particular technique on a course but I would always say that um, doing something rather than nothing um, will give you a few tools a few strategies um, and that air of confidence yeah, absolutely. I can say just from my own perspective, I've never taken a self-defense course, but I've been taught internally by, by colleagues in regards to just some of the little things that you can do to make yourself less of a target. Um, and for example, just when traveling on um, even public transportation, I always make sure I have a bag on me that has a zipper. Um, it's not just open. Um, if I have a backpack, which I do travel with a backpack a lot, they have those pockets toward the front where you can and put your wallet or your cell phone, but they're easily, you know, someone can easily open those. So, um, you know, I know to make sure that I put those um, important objects in, in the, you know, my, my front pockets, for example. So even little, little elements like that, it's important for, um, I think, organizations to, to give those tips and tricks to, to their travelers and their employees. Um, there's another question here, which I think is interesting, um, it, attending on the meetings and events side of things. Um, there's there's a question in regards to when alcohol is served. Do we do we are we obligated as a company to make sure that our, our employees are, um, are safe if they're at a work event where there's alcohol being served? Um, I'm not sure if anyone has any thoughts on that topic. I, I can answer that okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I work for, I work for Textile and we have multiple brands, including like Fabletics and Savage X Fenty and, and both of our main headquarters, we actually have bars on site. <laughs> so, uh, we, we often like we, uh, it is a part of, um, I would say like of our culture even, 
but that's why we have we have um, employees that are 21 and over. We have explained that there is a responsibility. And we also provide any sort of door-to-door -door service. Like there is no expectation ever that you will have to drive and there's no expectation ever that you will have to drink. There is a liability issue at play. So all we can do is provide these options and, and you know, make sure that we're looking out for one another. So there will always be like a sober sister or someone making sure that everyone gets home safely. And I've played that role more than once. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that makes total sense. Um... Another question here in regards to uh, corporate travel security managers, so people who are responsible for traveler risk, how would you get started with training um, travelers internationally on understanding what their risks are, um, in, in specifically female travelers internationally? If that's, if that's your, your job and your role, how would you really get started um, with, with that? Shall I take that? Sure. Yeah. So a number of our clients have, have successfully implemented um, female traveller safety training programmes or women traveller safety programmes over the years. Um, and quite often that impetus has actually come from the women themselves. Um, so they've asked for it. Um, I would always recommend engaging with the women's networks and talking to them about those concerns, because I think all of us on the panel will happily say that we've had an incident when we've been traveling on business and we've not told anybody about it for a number of reasons. It could be it's part of daily life or you know, we're over it now, or we just didn't know who to report it to, or it was so horrific, we didn't want to tell anybody. And so um, people aren't going to volunteer this information. And so I think that it will always be a welcome initiative to say that we want to look at women's security and maybe other minority groups as well within the organisation, get them in. And then typically what we might do is do a trial course and then get people to basically tear it to shreds and say what they like, what they didn't like. Um, I think it's important, whoever you work with, that the training that you build or the preparation is fit for your business, your traveler profile, where you travel to, so it can't just be off the shelf. And I, and I think where this works really, really well is if the global security team actually participate as um, trainers or presenters, because on those courses, quite often um, we'll be asked, you know, what about this? Is this in policy? Or who do I call if this happens? Or what if I'm in a country where, you know, if I'm sexually assaulted, I could be arrested. And so we also need the company line. Um, and it's great PR for the security team as well to get out there amongst the travelers. Yeah, if I could just add in to that, I mean, that was probably one of the more terrifying responses that I saw on the survey, as far as the number of people who experienced an incident, but didn't report it, because they, they didn't think anything would come of it, or, or many of the reasons that you stated, Carolyn. And I think as an organization, especially a global organization that has travel as a, as a main component, we have a real obligation to make sure that we are taking care of our people to the point that they're comfortable with telling that, whether it's through a whistleblower um, setup or, or what have you, because that's the only thing, that raising of awareness and, and sharing when something does happen is the only thing that's gonna highlight some of these incidents enough to, to be able to stop them and to create a different future for our female travelers and, and women travelers to come. So uh, to the extent that we can help create a um, safe place for people to be able to report these incidents, I think that's just critical. Yeah, and it starts with us having a conversation like this. So um, there's one more question here on the hotel side, Valerie. Um, can you expand upon what sort of systems a core has in place um, to assist with solo female travelers? Um, they're just from when checking in, I know you mentioned the elevators requiring a key to get to a certain floor. Can you expand upon any of the, the security um, precautions that a core has in place? Sure. Um, you know, I think everybody has their own preferences to, to a certain extent, right, as to what you're comfortable with or what you're used to. And maybe maybe some of those preferences are changing. I mean, I think before the pandemic, we were seeing the majority of our hotels, certainly when we are not talking about the economy hotels, but are above the economy level, we have 
doormen and bellmen that, that are there to escort you to your room. And I think a, a big trend before the pandemic might have been to say, no, no, I'm fine. You know, I've got this. I had my suitcase on the plane. I can take it to my room myself. I'm fine. And but that service is still always there. And, and perhaps more people now will be. I think it'll, I can't say for sure that that is the case, but I would be surprised if we didn't see more solo travelers, whether that's women or other people feeling vulnerable for whatever reason, maybe taking that opportunity to, to utilize some of the services that are available. And I noticed Accor got a lot of nice accolades as well in the comments section oh, for, for the so properties. Much. And, and yes, and the great job that you do. So it's about um, 20 minutes to the hour. And I think we can come back to questions if we have more time. But I want to make sure Carolyn has an opportunity to talk more about what Maiden Voyage does and what the opportunity is for the audience to take advantage of those services. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charlene. Um, yeah, I don't I don't really want to do a sales pitch. That's not the spirit of today's um, event. So I, I think I maybe just give some examples of what some organizations are doing um, just to, I guess, whet people's appetites and, and stimulate a bit of creative thinking. Um, so, so one of um, the organizations that we work with is a huge, well-known entertainment giant. Um, and one of the things that they've done during the pandemic is um, worked with us to really expand their travel security repertoire, not just for female and LGBT travellers, but um, for disabled travellers and travellers of different ethnicities. And what we found is that, um, you know, whilst we can talk to all kinds of examples, scenarios, case studies, um, nothing really um, is as powerful as storytelling. And therefore, what we've actually done is we've shot a number of films of people, real life people with lived experiences talking about some of the challenges that they face when they've been traveling on business. And some of these are really familiar. So, for example, a member of staff um, traveling to a conference with um, a senior male colleague who had already been making unwanted advances to the member of staff um, in the office. And these, of course, got progressively worse at a conference to the point that in the end she locked herself in her room. She became unwell. Um, and and left the conference early and in fact ended up leaving her job um, to travellers talking about um, travelling being on the autistic spectrum and how they may well be constantly checked um, at the airport because they look suspicious because they're constantly checking their pockets or you know a woman with um, chronic fatigue syndrome whether that's you know through an illness or somebody who's even just going through the menopause and how those um, those issues will impact them when they're traveling on business to you know lots and lots and lots of different scenarios but actually these videos really were a step change for the organization um, and really quite emotional to film for us as well because they weren't actors, they were real life people. Um, another one of our clients actually um, wanted to, I guess, and this is great because of the pandemic, they wanted to actually replace face-to-face -face travel, um, travel training with something that um, was bite-sized that travelers could um, consume at the time that's right for them. Um, maybe when they're on the move and nice rich media content. So in this particular case, we built some animations, but in within those animations, we also included um, information about their travel risk management provider, things that their company did, who to contact in, in case of an emergency. And so what we're seeing is uh, not only um, a widening in terms of the different um, minority groups that people are working with, we're also seeing more creativity, which is really fulfilling for myself and our team to go off and, and make these you know, amazing media um, tools. But also um, since the pandemic, the duty of care um, that employers are now signing up to goes beyond when somebody's heading to the airport. And in fact, what we're seeing is organizations um, 
working with us on solutions just to protect women walking to and from work or going out after a work event. I mean, I really like the idea that Stacey mentioned about um, sober sisters. I've never heard of that before, so I'm going to look into that. Um, and how we can also help other people if we see them, um, you know, see somebody being harmed or harassed, how we can step in um, and support them without becoming a victim ourselves. And so really, um, I guess the, the limit is only people's creativity in terms of how they bring the messages to their employees, which just makes it really fulfilling work for us to do. Oh, you're muted, Charlene. Thanks, Carolyn. That's great. And I think that those are real life examples, especially using video. You're right. Stories completely have a different impact than, you know, being able to, to share in other ways. So that's wonderful. And I believe there is a, a special opportunity. I know you don't want to make this a commercial and I appreciate that, but I, I think that there's a great tangible opportunity for people to take advantage, right, for the, for the remainder of this month. Yeah, so we are, um, for individual licenses of our e-learning, we're giving a 50% discount for the entire month of uh, March. And I think you're going to be sending out details with the discount code and the link um, out there. So we've got courses on hotel safety, safe ground transportation. We've got COVID-19, um, packing and pre-planning, because actually going back to our earlier conversation, I think the more that we are prepared before we travel, uh, both from the basic travel security, generic travel security, to the things that are specific to our personal profiles, if we get all of that right, it just creates a basis for a much more fruitful and also enjoyable trip. Because at the end of the day, business travel still makes my heart sick right it's still it's still it's still a great perk of the job yes I think you're right and you speak for most of us that are in the industry and when we're in the airport the heart and the blood start pumping and that's you know that's where everything happens so we don't want to lose that and I think everybody wants to be able to do something you know we want to give everybody something again that they can walk away from this webinar and be able to implement something for their companies because the world has changed and it apparently it's changed even more so for women travelers. And so that's something we want to address. But that's super helpful. I think we do have time for a couple of more questions, Ashley. And I see that there are some more mounting up. So can I? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a question just on the same topic of just getting um, this information. So in regards to the All Safe and Well campaign that you mentioned, Valerie, where can someone find more information around that? Because um, it would be really invaluable for for people to understand what that what that um, what those protocols are. Absolutely, we actually have a, a microsite called All Safe and Well, and there's one called All Meet Well as well. Perfect. And, and we can make sure that we send those in the follow up as well, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the global program is simply all safe. And if you're if you're on Accord, all.accord.com, you'll see information there pretty prominently as well. And if you have any specific questions, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Perfect. One last question in regarding um, international travel. So any advice that anyone has for business travel, travelers traveling internationally alone specifically? I definitely do. I um, We have a lot of, because we're like an e-commerce but slash fashion company, we have a lot of Gen Z, a lot of fresh new travelers that have never been overseas. So there is a huge learning curve and a level of like allowing people to feel a, a comfort. So the first, and I think the most important thing is just making sure that we're managing that trip door to door. You know, if we have overseas vendors, then those vendors will make sure that they're greeted at the airport and they're walked to their hotel and that they're driven to where they need to go. Because that's a very hard thing to pick up um, on your own sometimes, how to navigate overseas. But even more importantly, with our junior travels, especially, we have like a kind of a mentorship relationship where a senior manager We'll take them on the road for the first time to help them become acclimated to the travel and to understand what the nuances of that travel are. Mm. I love that. That Yeah, that's a great program. I think, too, especially right now, the complexity around traveling internationally has, you know, never been more of an issue, obviously, and it's changing by the day. We're certainly seeing that a lot with our customers. And although we're trying to automate as much as we can and put all of those services and tips and helpful advice in our apps, 
you know, certainly right now as the world is reopening, our customers want to talk to our travel consultants, you know, for every trip, they've got just that much many more questions because they want to eliminate the uncertainty and have confidence. So uh, it kind of comes full circle is what we were talking about. And I think that's momentary. I think we will eventually, you know, get back to a place where it becomes second nature. But um, as things change, we want to make sure that we've got the experts on the front lines to help our customers. I think that's, and maybe it's the hospitality in me, but I think it's just nice as well. I mean, we have this amazing app that tells you everything you want to know about the country you're going. What's the security risk? What's the level across every spectrum, whether it's just knowing the local cultures and customs or knowing actual natural risk like earthquakes, things of that nature, civil situations, you know, all of that. But, but still when I travel, if I have a colleague that I know that is in the country that I'm going to and they and they make a personal recommendation, I still feel that much better. Even though I might have read an entire report on the country I'm traveling to, I, I feel better with that personal connection. Yeah, absolutely, especially right now. Good. So before we have closing remarks, Ashley, anything else that we need to address from the Q&A? I believe we answered all the questions. Okay, amazing. Would anybody like to say something before I close the session? Anything to add? No, just that business travel is fantastic and I can't wait to get out there again. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. And, you know, we have, because we are a travel company, again, by nature, we have been traveling quite a bit, um, especially over the past several months. The calendar is starting to fill up. It's beginning to feel like the old days in, in many ways, which is a great sign but we know we're not out of it yet. And so we're here to support each other. And that really is the purpose of International Women's Day. It's the purpose of this webinar. We're here to lift each other up, to support and celebrate all of the great women in our lives, but also to give um, as much as we can back to those that are just starting out and beginning their careers. So with that in mind, again, I just wanna thank all of you for taking your time today to join this webinar. Hopefully we've given some real helpful tips to the attendees that are in the audience today. And again, we're here and you can reach out to us at any time via LinkedIn to answer questions as they may arise. But again, very heartfelt thanks to all of you panelists and happy International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a good day, everyone. Beautiful. And we've just provided the offer again that Carolyn outlined with Maiden Voyage, but this information will be available for all of uh, you in our, in our documentation to follow as well. So thanks again and have a great rest of the day.